long could a pandemic impact a country's politics? New research suggests the effects could last centuries. New research from the University of Virginia studying the Black Death indicates a negative link between a region's plague mortality rate and the likelihood of voting conservative 500 years after the outbreak. Daniel Gingrich was part of that research team. He is an associate professor of politics at the University of Virginia, where he's also director of the Quantitative Collaborative and co-director of the Clear Lab, part of UVA's Democracy Initiative. And full disclaimer, he's also my brother. Hi, Dan. Great to see you. So how did the high level, uh, highest levels of exposure to the Black Death impact a region's political future? Hey, Tanya. It's a real pleasure to be here with you. Let me begin by just saying that this is also research which is co-authored by Jan Vogler, who is a member of, of my team at the University of Virginia. So um, essentially, the argument is broken up into four parts. What we find is that the effect of pandemics like the Black Death are felt through their impact on the labor market. So the Black Death was a catastrophic pandemic that reduced the population of Europe by between 30 and 60 percent. So in effect, it decimated the labor supply in many parts of Europe, in particular Central Europe that we study. And in those places where the labor supply was decimated, it uh, led to the lessening of the obligations associated with serfdom. So workers became more free. They had greater rights. The economy in those areas became more complex. And eventually, you got political institutions, such as local town councils, that started to represent the interests of common people. In those places where those institutions were developed, you then got cultures of democratic engagement that lasted for centuries. So in those places where you had these cultures of democratic engagement, where black death mortality was high, when uh, uh, these areas of Central Europe then became the German Empire in the 1870s, and you had a period of mass electoral politics, the voters in those areas voted against traditional aristocratic parties like the Conservative Party. So interesting. So do you see any parallels between how the labor market was impacted by the Black Plague and how certain segments of the labor market are being impacted by today's pandemic. I mean, we see how clearly health workers are on the front lines and have gotten sick at higher rates than other groups, meat processing workers, et cetera. And also we see communities such as the African-American community that are impacted uh, on a, a greater level than some other communities. Can we extrapolate how that might play out politically in the years ahead? So both yes and no, I want to be clear here, right? The, the shock of the Black Death was many, many orders of magnitude greater in terms of its mortality than anything we could ever imagine coming out of COVID-19. So I don't expect COVID-19 to produce the same labor market dynamics uh, that the Black Death uh, produced. And certainly, I don't expect it to have a legacy that lasts into the centuries the way that, that, that the Black Death uh, uh, did in Europe. Um, in general, there will be consequences, however. So the major consequence of the Black Death was a, a change in socioeconomic inequality. It was a great leveler. It reduced inequality to a substantial degree. It seems that COVID-19 might actually be having the opposite effect, in part because of how governments are responding to the threat of COVID-19. For instance, one of the most effective instruments for social mobility is the institution of universal education, universal public education. And the reaction of many governments, including uh, uh, local and state governments in the United States, has been to limit children's access uh, to, to public education by limiting their, their, their access to schooling. What's happening is that families with means are now starting to hire private tutors. Families that are highly educated can transmit their human capital, their education to their children, but families without those resources in the home 
are going to be less able to provide a good education for their children. And so I'm really sort of worried about the long-term consequences for inequality as a function of how governments are responding to COVID-19. Same thing in, in terms of economic markets, right? When all of, all of this is said and done, a lot of mom and pop retail businesses, which were in a weakened condition before COVID-19, will basically be dead. And a large segment of the economy will be in the hands of a, of a relatively few a relatively small number of technology firms, right? Reinforcing inequality. But then do you see that some of that may be fueling some of the anger that's coming out of the Black Lives Matter movement and some of that could lead to some more progressive policies, no? I think that's right. I think, I think one of the things that um, is hopefully gonna come out of this pandemic is a real hard and serious look at um, universal health care, truly universal health care in the United States. One of the things that a pandemic shows you is that nobody in a country, you know, whether they're wealthy or not wealthy, is immune from the risk of a communicable disease, right? So if my neighbors do not have effective treatment and prevention, for communicable diseases, I cannot isolate myself. I cannot uh, put myself uh, out of harm's way just because I have the resources to use America's private healthcare system. And I, so I think there's gonna be a serious conversation about just in terms of public health concerns, whether it's necessary to go to a, a fully universal healthcare system in the United States. All right. Well, Professor Daniel Gingrich, thank you so much for joining us and uh, sharing that uh, great historical perspective. Well, thank you. It's a real pleasure.